size is your carbon footprint? Ah, the carbon footprint, uh, that I don't know. Whatever it is, the whole population of the world, make that a very, very big number. How much carbon I produce? Is that it? You mean the effect that my living has on the earth in terms of the products I consume? Paul, how come the Americans the smart one? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I, I don't know. I have no answer for that because that doesn't concern me. Okay. What what <laughs> concerns me is the fact that we have an energy company, uh, and everything you believe and think and feel about energy companies and all the mythologies around them, what have you, all of them are they coexist in their concert and in dissonance with one another. But what's astonishing is that we now have an energy company putting the onus on us, the consumers. The individual. We have an energy company. Whose, whose activities around the world are completely obscured, who are notorious for ecological problems everywhere, telling us that we are responsible for our carbon footprints and we have to take into our hands the future of the planet. I am just blown away. <laughs> <laughs> Christina? Uh, they don't provide any context for the statistic, too. It's hard to know how meaningful saving what they're going to save is. And any ethical promise made by a company that's in part responsible for creating the problem is hard to take, I think. Right, right. Of, of all people telling us what a carbon footprint is, I don't think BP is the one. And the fact that they I'm, – I'm pretty sure that they just made up this word. And this phrase. Actually, actually, I haven't. I did, I did a little research on that. Oh, it's really? becoming Yes, it's becoming a, one of these sorts of catchphrases uh, about, you know, what's mm. your, how, mu how much waste online. you're using, how much, yeah, and you can calculate your oh. carbon footprint, which is all, all of which are, they're well, all nutty. That sort of blows my thing, but I thought that they were being insidious by making up a word and then asking okay. everyone if they know what, what it's about. Right, and then right. people will be like, oh, my God, BP knows all these things about environmentalism. Peter, they're definitely trying to shame you. Are, right. are we stigmatizing you by calling it your oil company? No, well, not really. I'm Fourth in line here to defend a, a national asset, but um, it's really hard, isn't it? For I mean, what do you do if you don't agree with what they're doing? Stop buying gas. Good. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. now, what do we do? Um, and an environmental audit on a company like that is always quite good for them to undertake. And whether it's either Exxon doing something bad one week or Shell doing something bad the next, and it's they're all as bad as each other. But we mm -hmm. need we need them all. And it's really yeah. tough. And if they are saying to us, look. We realize this is a really bad business, ethically, environmentally. We're not doing the greatest of jobs, and we can't. But at least we're trying to make an effort, and we'd like to take you with us and say, look, if you didn't consume as much of the energy we produce, we wouldn't have to produce as much, and therefore our footprint would be s smaller. And the footprint is basically how deep an impression you leave on the earth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you can tread gently on the earth and leave it for future generations or make a big hole in it. I'm actually going to break with the table because, you know, while the function of the corporations is largely identical the, the, of the oil industry, politically, BP was the first to break ranks and admit That's global right. warming is yep. real and that took to a lot fair. of guts. Right. That yep. took a lot of guts. And they are them, investing you know? in sun power and mm -hmm. wind power. And but they're the only companies that are going to do it because... Otherwise, they, when oil runs out, they're going, to be, they're going to have no business. So it's actually in their interests mm -hmm. to get a head start. What's head sad, though, right. is that provi setting themselves forth as the answer, and they are a part of the answer, certainly, hides other possible answers like consuming less or government regulations. And who mm -hmm. needs the EPA? We but it's also, EPA. it's also just, I mean, how arrogant for them to say, you know what, you need to watch your carbon footprint. <laughs> how you, you, you need to watch my carbon footprint? Uh, I need to watch my carbon <laughs> footprint while you're around the world raping it? You know, I mean, I mean, it's just really arrogant. And but but the, but the thing is, it's not my responsibility. You know what? I've done those carbon footprint tests. I've done them. And you know what? They're, they're, they're like, how, you know, um, how big a refrigerator do you have? How many miles a day do you drive? What have you? And then it calculates your carbon footprint. Well, you know what? If I just put in, I'm driving to and from work, and, and this is my refrigerator, and, and I watch two hours a day of television, or whatever the case may be. It, it's not extreme, and I'm still one of the worst violators on the, on the there's no way that we can win because We're they American. have spent yeah. the, my entire lifetime creating a lifestyle for myself so that they could profit from it, and now they're asking me to take responsibility for the results of it.
Well, you and I have the worst case scenario because we've both flown in to do this show. Ah, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. But by, by, by the way, airline, mi airline <laughs> miles per biggest. year is one of the factors yeah. that they use in calculating out your uh, carbon and footprint. And Christina and I biked here. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's kind of made up for it somehow, <laughs> but I doubt it. But it's put out as an ambiguous number, though, because it's not clear if it's the carbon. I mean, she says the carbon I produce, but isn't it actually the carbon you consume? I mean, the, the British thermal units that... That you use? I mean, I don't know how they don't come. It's a very so. odd calculation. I mean, I don't understand it, but I can tell you that that it's being put forth by environmental groups, not energy companies. And BP mm -hmm. is picking up on it. I'm giving them some credibility. Yes, they are forward thinking and they are engaging in, right. in, in different renewable energies and trying to make those profitable and realistic and what have you. So I'm, I'm not maligning them for, for being who they are, but this commercial absolves them of a tremendous amount of responsibility and puts the onus on us. The onus mm -hmm. belongs on us to a, certain, uh, to a certain degree, but not to the extent that this commercial suggests. I am always fascinated by the relationship between personal responsibility and systemic responsibility. Right. And we're out exactly. of time. So exactly. exit question. What else might BP stand for, Christina? I have two. Go ahead, shoot them both. Bicycles, please. <laughs> Bogus promise. Ooh. Oh. Nana? Boundless profits. Oh. Peter? Best polluters. Paul? Bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> Buy our product, use less of our product. Okay. How about beach party? That's all we got time for. Come play with us again next week on Mental Engineering. The done. <laughs>